In today's video, I'm gonna teach you an incredible exercise known as the single leg Romanian deadlift into a vertical jump. Okay, so the single leg Romanian deadlift into vertical jump sounds like a bit of a mouthful, and it is. I wish I was capable of coming up with a better name for it. However, it is what it says on the tin. I must start by saying that this is an incredibly advanced exercise, and I think as a prerequisite, you have to have the ability of doing a number of exercises first before initially being able to move on to this one. This exercise is incredibly good for injury prevention, but also sports performance. It develops eccentric strength in the hamstrings, which is incredibly important, not only for hamstring strains, but also the prevention of injuries to the knee joint, whilst also giving you the benefit of developing the stretch shortening cycle or the plyometric ability of your hamstring and the ability to produce power into the ground through a vertical jump. It's a very, very complex exercise that involves lots of coordination, lots of balance and lots of strength. So before I demonstrate this exercise, and before I put it on the screen for you, I need you to be able to carry out the basic hip hinge first. I'll place a link in the corner of the screen now to a previous exercise that I've made a video on called the good morning. If you cannot perform the good morning exercise or hinge at the hip correctly on two feet, then I do not suggest that you carry out this exercise or place it in your athlete's training programs. Please do make sure you can hinge at the hips safely whilst maintaining a nice neutral spine before moving on to this. Second to the good morning, I think it's then important to be able to develop the balance and the coordination to carry out the basic single leg Romanian deadlift first. The single leg Romanian deadlift involves the ability to stand on one leg whilst being able to hinge at the hip, utilizing the functionality of the glute muscle to help stabilize yourself whilst being able to effectively flex and extend at the hip joint. Once you've been able to perform that movement, then and only then can you move on to this variation. So effectively this exercise involves a single leg Romanian deadlift, initially performed at body weight, hinging the hip. As I've previously said with the good morning exercise, it's essential that rather than just leaning over, you push your hips far back as physically possible until you feel a significant stretch or lengthening at the hamstring muscle. At that point, you're then going to aggressively jump as high in the air as you possibly can using that same leg. You can get some assistance or momentum generated through the arm drive, similar to what you would when you run. So effectively you use opposite arms. You drive one arm down, one arm up in order to generate upward momentum, and that will help get a little bit more rate of force development or power production into the ground so that you can then jump higher. Weight distribution is really important in this exercise. So as you hinge and push your hips rearward, there is a high likelihood that your weight is going to transfer onto or at least toward the heel of your foot. And that is perfectly fine provided that you don't go too far and then lose balance. It's important to still maintain three points of contact. The so three points being the heel and two points at the ball of the foot. The moment you feel that stretch in the hamstring, you're then going to aggressively drive as hard as you can in a vertical direction. So the aim is to try not to jump forward any, it's to try and jump on the spot effectively. It's very important that with this exercise, just like any other hip hinge exercise, is that your, your knees are only subtly unlocked. 
We're not trying to carry out a squat-like movement with this drill. As you push your hips back and search for the stretch in your hamstring, your knee should be slightly unlocked, but not bent. That is very, very important. The reason for this importance is that as you reach the point of stretch prior to initiating the vertical jump, you will experience a natural phenomenon known as the stretch reflex or the stretch shortening cycle. It's a very important and key part of this drill to make it very effective for sports performance. What effectively you're doing here is that by stretching the hamstring tissue itself and the tendons associated with the hamstring muscles, that stretching is gonna then result in an elastic response. That elastic response is gonna cause flexion or a bend in the knee and then allow you to drive vertically upward into the sky. This, this mechanism at the knee is something that happens across a lot of sporting movements, particularly within the sport of tennis during change of direction movements and sprinting short distances. It's a very important movement that we train, strengthen and load up and develop over a period of time. So this is a really good exercise to help develop sporting performance. Now this stretch shortening cycle will happen automatically. It's not something that you need to think about necessarily but it will not occur if you don't experience a significant enough stretch in the hamstring. So do make sure you're very effective at performing the standard single leg Romanian deadlift first, and you're more than capable of experiencing that stretch in the hamstring prior to moving on to this drill. Now, once you've mastered the ability to hinge at the hip, find the stretch in the hamstring, and then keep, whilst maintaining three points of contact, be able to drive up and jump as high as you can on one leg, we can then take it a step further. And this exercise is an absolute game changer. It's an incredible exercise. I only use with elite level athletes or advanced level athletes with maybe a training experience of four years or more, but this is genuinely incredible. This is the accentuated eccentric single leg Romanian deadlift into a vertical jump. By accentuated eccentric, what I'm referring to here is that you then use a barbell with a very heavy weight you use that during the lowering phase or the stretching phase of the drill. So you lower the bar down up until the point where you then feel a stretch in the hamstring before completely releasing the bar and dropping it in front of you. Obviously in this instance, you've got to be very careful that you're aware of where the bar is so you don't fall over it, but you drop the bar in place and then immediately jump as high as you possibly can. Accentuated eccentrics are a really effective way of potentiating the nervous system or switching on the nervous system to prepare the body for lifting big weight. And then you get rid of that weight. So then the nervous system is prepared to move that weight, yet it's not expected to. So the rate of force development or power that you can produce after releasing that weight is going to be dramatically bigger. You will get so much more out of this drill. So the key coaching points are, whilst holding onto the bar, you're gonna keep a nice proud posture, but without your rib cage exposed. It's important that you engage your abdominals and keep your rib cage locked down. As with any other hip hinge exercise, you're gonna drive the hips rearwards whilst maintaining a neutral spine, and you're gonna search for the stretch in the hamstring. The moment you achieve that stretch in the hamstring, you're going to release the weight, and whilst maintaining three points of contact in the foot, you're going to then jump as high as you possibly can. Quality is definitely more important than quantity here. So I do suggest that you stick with around three to five reps per leg. Now, generally the weight that you're gonna be able to use with this exercise is going to be dependent on your technical ability because it is a very complex exercise. However, one thing I will add is that eccentrically or during the lowering phase of any exercise, you're typically 1.5 times stronger than you are during the upward phase. As a general guide, I believe that you can lift around 130 to 150% of your back squat in the Romanian deadlift. Now I'm aware that you're only doing this on one leg. However, you're not gonna be dramatically weaker on one leg than what you are too. So let's say for example, that your recommended Romanian deadlift weight is around about 150 kilos. I think that you should be able to carry out the single leg RDL with around 100 kilograms. That being said, remember the point I made a couple of minutes ago, you are 1.5 times stronger during the lowering phase of a repetition than you are on the upward or lifting phase. Now remember here, we're releasing the weight at the end of the lowering phase. So in theory, whatever you can Romanian deadlift on two legs, you should, or at least should have the aspiration to build, to have the ability of being able to lift the same weight in this drill. You will have to take your time. You will have to develop this over a period of time. It might take you six to 12 months to master this drill. It is complicated. It is advanced as I've stressed. 
But this is something that you can really load up and I think you're only gonna get dramatic benefits from this drill once you're at that stage. Do have a go at this and by all means, send me videos. I'd be really interested to see your take on this. You can send me videos by tagging my account on Instagram, which is at tennis underscore strong. I'd be really interested to see your take on this drill and see how you guys are getting on with it. That's all for this video. I do hope you find this very interesting. As I always ask, please do hit the subscribe button below and also the button to the right of that, which is the bell icon in order to get notified of our next videos. I'll see you soon.